Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with The Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about CSCS exercise technique, and importantly, give you guys videos to look at to help you develop a coaching eye so that you can see the details of the acceleration phase of sprinting and change of direction. So in this video, we're gonna show you guys some videos, let you look at them, think about what errors might be occurring in those videos, and then we're gonna actually break down what errors were occurring in those videos and what technique cues you can give those athletes to help, and then show you a better example of what those videos should look like. This should help you develop that coaching eye so that way you're not missing questions on the practical applied section of the CSCS exam. I know these videos are really hard to come by, so hopefully this is really helpful for you. Let's go ahead and dive into it. First, start off by talking about the acceleration phase of sprinting. So I want you guys to watch this video and specifically look at that first 10 meters between the start position and that first white line you see on the ground and see what errors you might be noticing in that sprint technique. So now that you've taken a look at that video, let's go ahead and tell you the three main errors that we see in this technique. The first error that you might notice is premature upright posture. So with that line being about 10 meters away, we shouldn't see the athlete being fully upright until actually 20 meters. So this length of the video clip that you're seeing, we shouldn't even see the athlete get all the way to upright in here. But what you can see is this athlete is actually getting all the way upright in less than 10 meters, not what we wanna see. Being fast and efficient through the acceleration phase of sprinting really requires you to produce horizontal force. And if your center mass is too high, you just don't have a good vector to be able to create that horizontal horizontal force into the ground. And let's welcome Jose, who's gonna tell you guys a little bit more. Jose is a physical therapist, sports performance trainer, and just an expert on speed and agility. So let's talk about it here. So for that forward angle, we wanna make sure we're thinking about using a stick, a broom, whatever you have at home. Um, it's gonna be a 45 degree angle, and as he's going, he's maintaining that angle. And like we said, around that 20 meter mark, he's slowly starting to find that more upright posture. So the second technique error we'll notice with Matt is his forward knee drive. It's a little higher than we would wanna see in the acceleration phase, so it decreases his stride rate when that acceleration phase is really all about momentum and accelerating. So what we wanna think about is keeping that heel, that foot lowered to the ground and points that knee through. Not up, but through, forward, just like that. And a really good drill that we can use to teach that is this one right here. And this just gives Matt a really good cue as far as giving him a little bit of resistance, but forward knee drive and punch that knee through instead of driving the knee up. And then for technique error number three, we see neck hyperextension. This is not something we wanna see in sprint technique because it will direct where your trunk goes. So to get back to our trusty stick here, we should actually see this neck in line with the trunk. So as the trunk becomes more upright, then our neck should become more upright. And this is actually the same as it works in deadlifts and squats as well. Wherever the head goes, the trunk will follow. So to wrap up some things that we want to see during the acceleration phase of sprinting, we wanna see the trunk gradually get more upright until we hit 20 meter mark. We want to see the neck in line with the trunk, not looking upright. We wanna see a low recovery step where the toes and the heels stay close to the ground, especially during those first few steps to where we can get more ground contact time, more efficiently push into the ground and generate more horizontal propulsive force. While we don't have a perfect example for you, this is a much better look at what a better sprint technique looks like where we're not seeing a lot of those errors that we were seeing in the first video. All right, so now let's take a look at technique with changing direction. I want you guys to watch this video, think about what errors you might see, and then we'll talk about them afterward. All right, so let's talk about three different technique errors that you wanna have an eye for. The first one is not turning the head quickly when you change direction. So whether you're changing direction 180 degrees, 90 degrees, or at any different angle, you want your eye to go to the next cone or to the direction that you're going so that way your body will follow more quickly. This will help you align your hips and align your chest with the direction you're going and help you produce force in the proper vector. If your head is lagging behind or your eyes are lagging behind, your hips are gonna be lagging behind and you can't produce force quickly and efficiently in the direction that you should be traveling. So what we wanna see when we're rounding a cone and you'll see really high level athletes do this really well is actually turning their head quickly around that cone aligning their forces very well and then taking off in that direction another area that we notice when people are changing directions is not dropping their center mass efficiently so what we want to think about doing is dropping into those turns just like matt went over reorienting that head into that new direction but you want to start thinking about your shoulders not being square or level but you actually want to drop 
and have one shoulder lower than the other, then you can ref really efficiently get your body oriented in that new direction. So the third error we'll see with change of direction mechanics is short choppy arms. So the idea behind that is you wanna have good arms because our legs move with our arms. So the faster my arms can move, the quicker the steps I can take as I'm making that change of direction. But then also I can use that same propulsive action from those arms to help me get that new direction into that space. So make sure you're thinking about quick arms, quick feet, and then exploding out with those arms as well. When it comes to improving your deceleration, we can't just do slow eccentrics in the gym and then hope that that transfers over to being able to break effectively with speed work because it's not the same. Eccentric training is specific to the velocity that you're working at. So a more specific eccentric deceleration protocol right out of the CSCS book is to first work on something like a drop freeze if we're just a beginner athlete, but then when we come to actual sprinting and deceleration mechanics, we progress by doing half speed, decelerating in three steps, then running at three quarter speed, decelerating in five steps, and then the most advanced version, running at full speed, decelerating in seven steps. When we're doing these linear decelerations, what we wanna see is being able to drop the hips and slam on the brakes. So we're gonna drop the hips, slam on the brakes as we get to that deceleration. This is gonna help us lower our center mass and effectively break very hard into the ground with high impulse. Hopefully these videos have been helpful for helping you establish a coaching eye. If you want more videos like this, check out the full Movement System CSCS study course. The study course goes over each chapter one at a time and guides you through the information that you need to know to pass the CSCS exam. Not only do we have speed and agility technique videos with side-by-sides for the start position with things like power drills and plyometrics, but also program design examples and we cover the science in detail. Over 95% of the students who have completed the Movement System study course have gone on to pass the exam. So if that's something you're interested in, go and check it out at themovementsystem.com. Thanks so much for watching guys and we will catch you in the next one.